ELR 2.6 is about forces and free body diagrams. For this ELR, you're going to be drawing the free body diagrams just like we did in class, and mainly you're going to be talking about whether or not things are balanced, and if not, in which direction. So for this ELR, we're going to be doing some drawing of diagrams. The first one is a box on a frictionless table, so you don't actually have to draw this one um, as, as part of the direct... Oh wait, yes, it does say that. But some of the questions, like you might see on the test, might say to not draw, you don't necessarily have to draw the diagram, but it'll ask, like, what is the net force? But I would always recommend that you draw the diagram anyways, because it usually helps to make sure that you're avoiding any mistakes. So we have a box sitting on a frictionless table, and that box is being pulled to or from the right with a force of 10 newtons. So that's going to be from the right with 10 newtons. And then another rope is pulling on the box from the left with 20 newtons. Again, for free body diagrams, as we talked about in class, it doesn't matter if you decide to point your arrows into the box or away from the box. To me, it does not make a difference. Now the question is asking, um, which direction will the box accelerate? So first off, you may be thinking, well, hey, there's no weight and there's no normal force. Those two things exist, but because it's just on a frictionless tabletop and it's not saying anything about going through the table or being thrown up into the air from the table, we're going to assume that those two things are balanced anyways, and so they're not worth our time to draw. But now we look at the two sides, and balanced means what is left over after things cancel. So on the left side we have 20, and on the right side we have 10. And so 10 is going to cancel out from either side, and we're left over with 10 newtons left as our net force. Remember, a force is a, a vector, so it's going to have a magnitude, 10, and a direction, left. And it's not complete without both of those things. Number two, a parachutist opens the chute, finds herself gently floating downward, no longer gaining or losing speed. She feels the upward pull of her harness while the gravity pulls her down. So it's asking which of these two forces is greater? Well, the key here is that you are no longer gaining or losing speed, which means that things are balanced. And if you have an object that is balanced, you have an equal amount of up and down forces on you, and that means that the object is still moving, it's just not accelerating balanced things do not accelerate. And so it's saying which of these two forces is greater? They are the same. Um, the next part says um, use free body diagram to illustrate this, so let's just give them some arbitrary numbers. If her downward force is 10, then the parachute must be filling up with 10 as well. For number three, a smooth wooden block is placed on a tabletop. You apply a force of 30 newtons, but the block doesn't move. Draw free body diagram. So not moving is also maintaining a constant velocity, except now the velocity is zero. So just like with the parachutist, who is falling at a constant rate, or, or not accelerating, now we have a block sitting on a table, not moving. So its velocity is zero, and it's not changing. So since it's zero and not changing, we know that this thing is going to be balanced. And it's saying we're applying a force of 30 newtons and the block doesn't move, so that must mean that there is friction pulling in the opposite direction with the same force, 30 newtons. Um, the force of friction is always something that's going to counter some other force or some other movement. It's also saying to add the normal force and force of gravity, so there's our weight from the force of gravity. We'll say that it's maybe 5 newtons or something, and 5 newtons must be the normal force as well. For number four, we have a painter's staging. That's this whole rig thing, a little highlight. It's this rig that the painter is standing on. And that rigging, according to the question, uh, supports the painter that has a weight of 250, so that's our painter's weight. And there's a force meter on the left that reads 200, one on the right, so there's something pulling up on this thing with a combined total of 400 newtons up. And it wants to know what is the weight of just the staging platform. So if we have 400 newtons pulling up, we've also got 250 newtons going down. That's from our uh, from our our person standing on the rigging. It wants to know what is this missing force. Well, here's the the key to this: is that the painter is just standing there. It's not moving. It's not accelerating. I should say. And so because it's not accelerating, whatever the downward force is has to be the same as the upward force. So if we're looking for this mystery downward force, these two things added together has to equal 
the amount that that rope is pulling on. So the only op option is to make this 150. So this missing weight is 150 newtons. Whoops, 150 newtons. For number five, we have a toy car that is being pushed at a constant speed. It's being pushed with a force of six newtons. What's the force of friction? So here's our toy car. It's being pushed at a constant speed, so that means that whatever the push is has to be the same as friction because constant speed is uh, a balanced diagram. For number six, a cart is being moved with a net force of 10, being pushed in one direction by Reuben and in the other direction by Katie. Reuben pushes on one side with a force of 30. What must Katie's force be? So there's a lot going on here, so let's start with the diagram. It's being moved with a net force of 10. So that means that all the leftovers, all the leftover force must equal 10 newtons. Um, so we have to figure out, well, if that's the case, we have to figure out which, which is the missing. This is a lot like the rigging question. So um, Ruben's pushing one way, Katie's pushing the other way. Since it's not telling us which way, we can just pick. So let's see, let's say Ruben, Ruben's moving it this way. Um, he pushes on one side with a force of 30 newtons, and um, Katie's pushing on the other side. So this is the missing force um, for Katie. Since it's not telling us which direction it's unbalanced, we can pretend like Katie is the one pushing harder or softer. If she pushes harder than Ruben, then that must mean that she's either push, she's pushing with 40 newtons. That would give us a leftover of 10. If we want to imagine that Reuben is pushing harder, she would be pushing with 20 newtons, because 30 minus 20 would then give us the leftover of 10. But because they've left it open to us, either of these answers can be correct. 